Okay, so in this video, we're gonna look at the structure of the heart and how some of the structure relates to its function, which are the most common questions. I'm gonna draw a very simplified version of the heart. If you see a picture or a photo of a heart or a real drawing, it's usually got the aorta and the pulmonary artery twisted around each other, it looks a bit different. But for understanding which bits go where, this is the easiest diagram that you can draw. Okay, so there's two sides. We have the left and the right, but in the human heart, they're actually, when we draw it, the other way around because the perspective of the viewer is opposite to that of the person who owns the heart. So the drawing is the person who owns the heart. So we're looking at it, it's like looking at something in the mirror. So we've got the left and the right. We're going to separate these, and these are going to be two of the major blood vessels. So this line doesn't go down quite so far. We then have the other blood vessels join. The top chambers are called the atria. We're going to leave a gap here on both sides. We're going to fill that gap later on. And this, the left side, should actually be slightly bigger. I mean, it, this we're not worrying too much about accuracy and scale, just the significance of that does relate to its function. Okay, so note that these don't join up here. These are holes. The blood is going to flow out of this. So let's label. We have the left side and we have the right side. We also have the two top chambers. These are called the atria, plural, or atrium, singular. In fact, I'm going to draw my muscle. I want the outside of my heart to be complete. So the, the atria don't need very much muscle because they're only pumping blood down into the ventricle. This is the left ventricle. It's the biggest one. This is going to have the most amount of muscle because it pumps the blood the furthest. Again, the atria up here doesn't need very much muscle. And this one doesn't pump the blood as far. This one's only going to the lungs. So it doesn't matter exactly, but you want this, this left ventricle to have the most amount of muscle, and that is relevant to the questions. Let's put the direction of flow of blood. So it comes back from the lungs in this direction. It's going to go down from the atria into the ventricles. It's then going to flow out the bottom of the ventricles and out the top and go to its relatively different places. This one's going to go around the body. And once it's finished going around the body, it comes back in here, down here, out to the lungs, back from the lungs, and so on. Okay, so let's start labeling some of the more important structures here. I'll start with all the major blood vessels. This one, the biggest artery coming out of the body, is this is the aorta. Now, it's not, doesn't have, that's its only name, but it is an artery and it begins with an A. So we can say it's the biggest artery. It carries oxygenated blood to the body. Okay, this one, coming back from the lungs. So anything lung-related is pulmonary. So pulmonary, and it's coming back to the heart. Any blood vessel flowing back to the heart is a vein. So this is actually oxygenated blood in a vein, which is a little bit unusual. This is why you can't say that all veins are deoxygenated. This is the exception. So it carries oxygenated blood from the lungs. I'm going to fill in the little gaps in here in a moment, but... Before that, I'm going to finish all these. So this is a vein. It's coming back towards the heart, but it's not called a vein. It doesn't have vein in its name, but it does begin with V. In fact, I'm going to maybe underline my A there. So this is the vena cava. The vena cava is the vein returning uh, from the body. And then the last one, the last exiting, well, it's, this one's going towards the lungs to complete the circuit. So it's pulmonary. It's going away from the heart. So it's an artery. It's the pulmonary artery. It's deoxygenated blood, I should maybe say. Deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Okay, so they're the major blood vessels. We've got our direction of flow. Um, now I'm going to label the chambers. Okay, so I'll draw the arrows in black so we don't get confused with our direction arrows, but I'm going to give these a red color. So this is the left atrium. Atrium singular, atria plural. I mean, here we can refer to one or both, so I will give the singular in this case. So what does this do? Well, it pumps blood from the atria into the ventricles. So let's do the right atrium. I'm going to leave a gap here because I'm going to mention what goes in these holes here. In fact, I've missed off a little bit there. Okay, so let's do the ventricles. I'm going to label them a little bit lower down. The left ventricle, okay, so this has got thick muscle, the thickest muscle, and it pumps blood the biggest distance, so all around the body. Uh, 
Obviously, this blood has come back from the lungs. This is oxygenated blood. So the right ventricle, well, it pumps deoxygenated blood um, towards out the pulmonary artery towards the lungs. Okay, so the mystery gaps now that I'm going to fill in here. We've got, doesn't really matter where these are, got some valves. These valves between the atria and the ventricles, these two, are called the atrioventricular valves. Your teacher might call them bicuspid or tricuspid, these things here. That's not what AQA call them. AQA call them the atrioventricular valves here, and these two are called the semilunar valves. So that's the terminology you should be using in your exam. In the mark schemes, they do allow AV valves. But again, whenever you're writing an acronym, you should you write the full word out first and then put it in brackets. And then the examiner knows fully that you, what you're talking about. So valves, they make sure that the blood is unidirectional. So when the ventricles contract, the blood can't go back up into here. It can only come out through this way. They're unidirectional valves. That just means they're one way. When do they open? They open when the pressure is higher here than they, the pressure is here. So that's atria, plural, because I'm talking about both at the same time and the ventricles. When is the pressure higher in the atria than the ventricles? Well, when the atria are contracting, and which we can say systole, the atrial, atria systole, and the ventricles are relaxing, or ventricular diastole. But those words are not that essential for getting the grades. And then these two, they have a different name. I did mention them. They're called the semilunar valves. Again, they ensure that the blood is unidirectional. They open when the pressure is greater in the ventricles than in the blood vessels above. So when is the pressure not greater? Well, when this is when the ventricle is relaxing, it's refilling, then the pressure in here is low. And so the blood gravity will be pushing the blood back down, but it can't come back down because the valves are one way valves, a bit like uh, lobster pots. There's one way in, but no way out. Okay, so the final thing I'm just gonna do here is summarize the changes of as, as one heartbeat is initiated. So the first step is that the atria contract and the ventricles uh, fill up with blood. The pressure in the atria is higher, the AV valves open, and the semilunar valves are closed. I've done them in red here just because they are key terms. You do need to refer to them and what the pressure is doing and how it's controlled. Okay, second step, the ventricles contract. Yeah, that's going to increase the pressure in here. So that means the pressure is higher in the ventricle than the atria. So this atrioventricular valves are going to close. The pressure then is going to be high here and higher here than it is here. So the semilunar valves open. And the third stage is they both relax. So they are both in diastole, which is the grammatically or the scientifically correct way of saying that. So they both relax. So it's the recovery phase of the heart. And that, during that time, blood is flowing in from the pulmonary vein. So the atria has higher pressure than the ventricle. So the AV valves are open, but this is not contracting. It's still relaxing, but there is still higher pressure here. And then gravity will be pushing this blood down because the ventricles are relaxed. So these valves are going to be closed. These will be open, but they won't, it won't be gushing through. So when we're talking about these questions, you always need to say, where is the pressure higher? Where is the pressure lower? Which valves are open as a result? Uh, and that's basically it. The atria contract. Obviously, when the atria contract, the ventricles are relaxed. They can't both contract at the same time. Otherwise, your heart would sort of explode. The ventricles contract, the atria are relaxed, and then they both relax and they fill up. The atria fills up, pumps the blood down, cycle repeats.